Yo, been a while, huh? After a bit of a hiatus, it's always nice to go back to your comfort zone. And if you've spent any time on this channel, you know that means weirdly satisfying physics simulations. Well, that and those golden loaves of buttery bliss, but I'm getting a bread of myself. Today's subject may not be my fresh from the oven muse, but it pairs quite nicely with it. Prepare yourself for the soggiest, most clammy video on the entire internet as we dive headfirst into the moist utopia of liquid simulations. Don your wetsuits, friends. It's go time. My favorite thing about new technology and hardware is the way it opens the door for new means of interaction in games. I mean, sure, watching liquids spill around just for the sake of it can be satisfying, but what really gets my mind racing are thinking of in-game applications of that kind of tech. Are you trying to escape the lava flow of an active volcano? Getting the perfect chocolate coating in a new Cooking Mama game. It's incredibly promising, but also understandably unrealistic on even the beefiest of current hardware. Liquids present a unique set of challenges. Since they take the shape of their container, they're quite literally fluid and almost always in motion. There's that, and the different parameters you need to account for. A glass of milk doesn't move the same way as a half-melted milkshake. And then there's the question of whether or not the milk is lactose-free. I mean, sure, that doesn't actually change anything, but I want to know the milkshake lore. The fluid implicit particle, known as FLIP to friends and lovers, is a numerical technique used to simulate the behavior of liquids. Here's but a taste of its mighty power. Fancy stuff, right? It runs at a blistering one frame every two days. Sure, that sounds rough, but what if there was a way to pump out, dare I say, more than half a frame per day? Enter fast fluid simulations with sparse volumes on the GPU. Its secret is its state-of-the-art title, which for the layman includes the word fast, thus speeding it up by a whopping 10 billion percent. Hyperbole be damned, it actually is a much, much faster means of utilizing flip. A scene like this one could be rendered at about 5 frames per second, while this slightly less taxing setup can fly by at a mind-blowing 7 FPS. If half the games I played on the Nintendo Switch are any indication, that's ready to ship! I'm just kidding, I love you, Nintendo. Please send me stuff. This kind of tech could really spice up a new Bioshock game, or do a real number on remakes of existing games. Games like Hydrophobia Prophecy. To the uninitiated, and honestly that's most of us, it wasn't an especially popular game, Hydrophobia Prophecy was a 7th gen survival horror game that leveraged some surprisingly convincing fluid simulations to flood the cramped hallways you found yourself trudging through. Dynamically rising and falling water levels were less Ocarina of Time's water dungeon, and more like if Nemesis from Resident Evil 3 was a super grumpy body of water. It was tense and claustrophobic, and a pretty interesting take on horror, even if the other elements of the title didn't exactly receive glowing praise. It's hard to deny the promise of its concept and setting, though, and the thought of tech like Flip taking it to the next level is some pretty spooky stuff. The more convincing the fluid simulations were, the more immersive the entire experience would be. Even without the fancy tech of tomorrow, we've already seen some amazing takes on in-game water, from recent standouts like Sea of Thieves to the retro rolling waves of Super Mario Sunshine. You have any particular favorites? Let me know below! Take a little break from liquid, I've got a piss like a racehorse. Let's move on to another topic. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Wolper. Who? Come on now, Joshua Wolper. The big J? You, you don't. Okay, fine. You uncultured heathens. Joshua Wolper is the man behind my favorite digital Oreo, that one watermelon that got royally messed up, and those crab candy things. I I wouldn't eat those, just a matter of principle. But he's been hard at work. No longer confined to sweets, his latest treat is a petite sheet of meat. Look at that majesty. Maybe toss it back in the fire for a sec. I like it charred because I have terrible taste. The Big J, as he's known to only his absolute closest friends, has masterminded advancements in his material point method 
method that allows for even better separations of different materials. Things like muscle fibers can now be realistically torn apart, which is begging to be used in a Mortal Kombat game that I will never play because that's really gross. This is some super versatile stuff. Utilizing its number crunching magic, we can observe the majesty of a melting bunny. Because we're not monsters, we'll do it the kindness of unmelting it just for you. This tech is even responsible for those chocolate chips melting from last time, whose multitude of parameters like temperature and elevation you could tweak to result in the ideal treats. Even molten lava is no match for the Big J, but you can't eat that, so I'm not as interested personally. There's clearly a lot you can do with this kind of thing. Ah! Returning to liquids, sorta? Technically, not really. Uh, let's talk about the fluffy white stuff. No, 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 I, I mean, I wouldn't say no, but, ah, yes, here we go, snow. A lovely take on water's chilly cousin. Seriously, this is pretty neat. It's not ready to be used in game, not by a long shot, but combine it with the MPM melting and the thought of playing a game about melting your way through a horde of homicidal snowmen with a flamethrower sounds pretty cool. In fact, you know what? Forget you heard that. I'm gonna call up Valve, see if we can make some magic happen. Back to an oldie but a goodie, we've talked about Euphoria on the channel before. It's the lovely physics engine that lets pedestrians in Grand Theft Auto 4 onward tumble realistically, and the stormtroopers of the Force Unleashed cling to debris for dear life. It's one of those amazing pieces of tech that hasn't really been seen a whole lot since. Thankfully, Ubisoft Toronto is working on something just as exciting, a method of utilizing IK rigs in their games. A rig is like a digital character's skeleton and dictates how animators can make them move. An IK rig specifically allows for more dynamic reactions to things like different terrain, strong wind, or a whole host of other external factors, like allowing a red man to strangle his horse next to a... Uh, okay, I don't really know what's going on here, but looks like he, he did what he set out to do, so good for him. I'll grant you not all of this is super new, but it could bring some really incredible weight and adaptability to the way that characters move. Procedural animation just not doing it for you? How about soft tissue deformation? Seeing as how something like 95% of gaming's protagonists are composed of squishy flesh, this could help make them look a whole lot more believable. Sure, there could be some more salacious applications, but I trust the gaming industry to hold itself to only the highest of moral standards. <laughs> That's enough about the fleshy bits. What about what covers them? That's right, we are the only YouTube channel brave enough to talk about digital clothes twice. We've talked about this a bit before, but in an exciting twist of fate, there have been a few new advancements since then. My mind is a flutter with games starring a sentient towel who's tasked with absorbing and wringing out different liquids to solve logic puzzles. I... Actually, that, that sounds kind of fun. Okay, forget that one too. Gotta call Valve back. As far as gaming has come, there's so many possibilities still out there. Each seemingly impossible hurdle is vaulted over time and time again. Things like liquid simulation might seem like a minor aspect of a game, but as they're pushed forward, entire experiences can be built around them. Experiences that were all but impossible just moments before. Experiences like my grand opus, a game where you play as the iceberg that sank the Titanic. And so another video is complete. I hope your brain is now swollen with knowledge, my friend. But this is just the beginning. In the next episode, prepare yourself for mouth-watering simulations of hair, sand, smoke, hairy smoke, sandy hair, and, and more. Time will tell. 
In the meantime, and I know it's annoying to ask, but if you could like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, it really does help us out a whole lot, and it lets us know that we're making the kind of stuff that you want to watch. If there's anything specific you'd like to see us talk about, or if you just want to congratulate me for being the first person to win the Kentucky Derby in a horse costume, then drop a comment below. Till next time, I'm Joey Nasser, this is The Cutting Edge, and I'll catch you later. Oh, <laughs>